Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in the season of Lent. Welcome to those who are here in the building and those who are joining us online. It's good to be together as the body of Christ. We continue our Lenten focus on prayer this morning with a practice called Lectio Divina. I'm curious, has anyone heard that phrase before? See one hand going up. <laughs> perfect, perfect. This will be an introduction for all of us. Uh, it's a Latin phrase that basically means sacred reading, and it's a way of praying with Scripture. Um, we know that Scripture is for us a source of wisdom, of comfort, of challenge. Um, it's very central to us as Christians. It's a place that we trust and that God meets us in these words when we read them. And so we'll have some time to practice this way of praying together today. I'll lead you through this, um, this way of praying. Um, and it's really not so much a way of reading scripture, but very much listening. Um, I know I said at the beginning of this series, uh, we talk about how prayer is both talking and listening to God, but a lot of the ways that we pray, certainly in our worship, are a lot more talking than listening. So again, this way of praying with scripture really lifts up and creates that space for listening to what God is saying to us through the words of scripture. We'll begin our time of worship then with confession and forgiveness, and you may remain seated. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love. And help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name. Your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to rise in body and in spirit for our opening hymn.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Dear Guiding One, you are one who walks with us and remains with us. You help us with the everyday and with the unexpected. Help us learn to turn to you, to lean on you, to draw wisdom from you, so we can grow in faith and confidence each day. Amen. Please remain standing for our gospel acclamation. taken from Luke 6, 12 to 13. Now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm going to test this out and see if I can see well enough because if you have watched our online worship you probably will know that with this light on it completely washes out me at least with my complexion so I'm going to see if this um, is better for our online worshipers uh, this week. So I wonder if anyone here can tell me what the shortest prayer in the Bible is. I don't know if that's ever come up in any Bible trivia that you've done before. I'll give you a clue. It's in the New Testament, and the person who prays it is Peter. It comes from a story that I think will be familiar to many of you. Um, it's that story the disciples are out in a boat, and there's a huge storm, and they see Jesus walking towards them on the water. And when he gets close, Peter asks to join Jesus. And as soon as he steps out, I don't know if you remember this story, but as soon as he steps out, immediately he starts to sink. And so he cries out, Lord, save me. Now he doesn't say amen, and I don't know, I mean, if we're being really technical, um, <laughs> we might say, well, that's not a prayer. Um, but we know it is, right? And I know that that is a prayer that many of us have prayed in our lives, probably on more than one occasion, right? Um, it's, it's short, it's simple, it's sweet, but it really, it says it all, especially in those moments of, of urgency, right? When we find our resources at an end and when we don't know what else to do, I think sometimes as we get older, we maybe learn to pray that sooner, uh, right? But we still catch ourselves at times where we've tried everything that we think we can do, and it's not until we've, we've done all those things, right, when we really feel that our resources are at an end, that we don't know what else to do, that we pray, God, help me. Um, as I said, sometimes this cry is urgent, as it was for Peter, as he was sinking in the water. Other times, uh, we might pray this in a time when we are simply, it's not as urgent, but we are still seeking guidance and direction. If We have a, an important decision to make. And that's what we see Jesus do in this short little snippet we heard from Luke's Gospel. Jesus spends a whole night in prayer as he decides which 12 people he will choose to be his disciples. It was a really big decision. Um, it wasn't one that he took lightly, and he needed to talk to God about it. He took this whole night in prayer to make this decision. Um, it was a time that helped him make, a, make this big choice, think about all of the things that went into that, and to listen for what God might be saying in his heart, what, what, what direction to go, to ask for that wisdom and that guidance in making a decision like that. 
For us, of course, one of our greatest sources of, of guidance when it comes to looking for what God has to say for us, looking for direction, is the Bible. I know those of us raised in the Lutheran Church, and likely this was maybe something we heard during Confirmation, we know that Reformation rallying cry, sola scriptura, right, scripture alone. And this is the teaching that Luther really emphasized, the idea that the Bible, the scriptures, are the only infallible source of authority for Christian faith and practice. Right? We, we look at scripture, these words that have been passed down through generations um, that we believe were inspired by God. They were written by humans, but they were inspired by God. And we trust that in these words, in the stories and prayers and poems, that we meet God, that God comes to us. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, God still speaks through these words in our time and place. That God will offer us guidance and wisdom and help through these words. And of course, there are different ways to read scripture. Um, I know for many of us, the first go-to if we are looking for that guidance and wisdom will be Bible study or in sermons, right? And that's a particular approach where we often are reading scripture using mostly our heads, right? We're thinking about it critically. We might want to find out more about the history or the values of the time and place. Um, and it's a reading, though, that still we're looking for that wisdom, guidance for faithful living. It's a way of wrestling with some of those big questions of life. Um, it's also a way of looking for truth in, in our tradition. So that's one way that we can read scripture. But through the centuries, Christians have also prayed with scripture, which isn't, you know, totally different. You know, we still use our heads uh, when we pray too. Uh, but it is a bit more heart-focused, listening for God's word for us through the words of Scripture. And this practice, Lectio Divina, that we're going to experience this morning is a practice that dates at least as far back as the 6th century, at least in the form that we're going to practice today. But its roots are arguably even older than that. So... Um, it's a way of praying that treats scripture not as something to be studied or a set of truths that we need to, you know, intellectually understand, but it looks at the Bible as the living word, right? This idea that scripture is always alive, always active, always fresh, always new, that it always has a word to offer for us in our time, in our place. As I said at the beginning, it's really not so much a way of reading scripture as it is of listening to scripture, listening for what message or insight, what word God has for us in this moment. <laughs> so in this way, um, Lectio Divina, this practice of sacred reading, it might not answer a specific question or problem that we have, but it is something that if we practice it regularly, if we engage in scripture this way of deep listening, um, it really steeps us in the stories of scripture, right? Um, as you'll see, this is a practice that involves reading the same passage multiple times. And that doing that, we know has a way, I mean, that's how we study or how we try to memorize something is we read it, we digest it, we try to internalize it. And that's what... Lectio Divina can do with scripture. It helps us internalize these stories so that they, they live in our hearts. They're not just in the pages of scripture so that when we encounter a moment in life that is challenging or that presents us with something um, difficult, that we have those words closer to heart, that they can be there to help us in those future moments. So in your worship guide, um, and for those who are watching at home, there is a link to that in the video description. Um, you will see that there are, um, on the inside, there's a five or six step um, practice of praying with scripture. So I'm just going to, we'll review it and then we're going to, to practice this together. So you can use this method with any passage of scripture. Usually you choose something shorter. Um, 
But again, that's not a rule. You can do a longer one too, um, but it doesn't need to be very long. We're going to be using Psalm 23 for our practice this morning, which I know um, I chose it on purpose because it's a very familiar passage. It is one that many of us still turn to um, in times of need. because It's a very comforting, encouraging passage. Um, I'll be curious to, to know or maybe pay attention, you know, if you notice something different in this very familiar passage, if something different speaks to you as we read it this, this way this morning. But you can use it with any passage of scripture and you know, even ones that are less familiar to you or ones that are brand new. And so what we will do um, in this practice is we will read it, the same passage, we'll read Psalm 23 four times. But each time we read it, I will read, you will listen. Um, there's a different intention. So the first time through, you listen for a particular word or phrase that jumps out at you. The second time through, spend a little bit more time then reflecting on that word or phrase. Ponder its meaning for you. The third time through, um, invite you to offer a prayer to God. What it is that's on your heart that, that comes up in response to that word or phrase. And then after the fourth time, it's just meant to be a time for silence, to rest in God's presence. Um, so I, I, said, I will read each time and I will offer a bit of silence um, after each of those readings for you to um, do those steps and I will guide you through as we are praying this as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to share is a quote before we, we practice this and I, I found it helpful so hopefully it, it will for you be helpful for you too. It's from a book written by a man named David Benner and it's a book that's all about this kind of prayer about Lectio Divina and he says, sometimes God may speak very directly. A word or phrase may seem to virtually jump out at you. Other times, it won't be so obvious, and there will be days when God does not seem to speak at all. But still, just listen in openness and attentiveness, and if nothing in particular seems to be speaking to you in a special way, simply take a word or a phrase in faith and carry it with you. It might be that this word or phrase will speak to you more personally later, sometimes when you least expect it. Or it may be a word that someone else needs. And what I think is important about what he says too is that um, there are some days when we sit down to pray and our heart will be in it, our head will be in it, we'll sort of feel connected to God. And there are other times where it just feels disconnected, right? Maybe we're really distracted, we've got a lot going on and we just can't get in that space and it feels... Um, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel connected to God, it doesn't feel like prayer. I like his advice because it encourages us still to do, do what we can, meet God where we're at. Um, and so this morning, as I said, if there's a word that strikes you and right away speaks to you, that's wonderful. If not, just choose one. And again, too, these are four steps. But they kind of don't always have to go that way, right? Don't force yourself if your mind is kind of going one way or you're already jumping ahead to reflecting on the meaning and not just sitting with the word. That's okay. That is the spirit at work. And this is, is a, a four-step method that's meant to kind of progress our, our deepening into the scripture. Um, but it's not a hard and fast rule, um, which I've tried to, again, lift up as we've spent this time in prayer. So, uh, with all of that, let's try this out. I'm going to invite you then to settle into your seat, to kind of get in a position where you feel comfortable. Um, you can close your eyes. You can keep your eyes open. If you want to write anything as we're doing this too, you are certainly more than welcome to do that. So let's just take a moment to settle, to take a couple of breaths in and out as we begin this time of prayer. God, as we come to your holy word, we pray that you will open our hearts and minds to the message you have for us today. In this first reading, we attend to the words that we hear and we listen particularly for a word or phrase that stands out to us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. <coughs> As we listen a second time, I invite you to draw your focus to the words, phrases, or sentences that stood out for you, and to reflect on and be curious about why they resonate with you. What might God be asking of you through the scripture? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life. As we listen a third time, we respond in prayer to what has touched our heart and mind. We pay attention to any prayer, prayerful response that arises within us. Gratitude, praise, even sadness or anger. And we offer these prayerful responses to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
as you hear this passage one final time, allow yourself to simply be with God in silence. Rest in God and be with the God who has spoken to you through the word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Thank you, God, for the many ways you speak into our lives. Thank you especially for the gift of your word, hope, wisdom, inspiration, and life for generations. Amen. So that is Lectio Divina, or at least one way of practicing that. And as you can see, it's quite countercultural to our time to really, it slows us down, um, you know, to sit with the same passage of scripture four times. I don't know for any of you if it starts to feel monotonous even, right? We're not used to, used to that. Um, but it is, I think, a really helpful way, especially if we haven't done this before, to enter into scripture. I don't do this every week, but often um, at the start of a week, say on a Monday when I'm sitting down and thinking about my sermon prep, um, I will do this the first time I read a passage. Um, because, you know, I think we're so quick to, to move to what does this mean? What, what do I think about this? But to just sit back um, and listen and to notice, you know, what's, what is speaking to me this week? And it's often surprising what I do notice, or what you do notice, right, that otherwise often we just read past, and it's often especially with these really familiar passages, right, we think, I know this, um, we often shut off our brains a little bit, right, and so a practice like Lectio Divina can help us hear these passages in a new way. So whether you had a word that spoke to you very powerfully this morning, or you chose one because you just weren't quite sure, <laughs> that it didn't really seem to speak to you right now, I pray that it will, and I pray that God will use that word in your, in your life today or this week um, as, as you need that word. We'll continue our worship now with our hymn of the day, and I will invite you to rise in body uh, or in spirit as you are able.
you always. And also with you. For those who are worshiping at home, if you're with someone else, I invite you to greet one another with a sign of peace or to reach out to someone right now or later today by text or call to check in on them. And those of us who are here in the building, I can stay where you're in your spots, but to turn and give a wave or a sign of peace uh, to those around you. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our words and our actions as we seek to embody your vision of peace, mercy, and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at the risk of wildfires, for trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for an end for all conflict and war. We, pr we pray for your peace to come, especially in Ukraine. Spread your wings of protection across all who face danger this day. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of your healing. We especially pray for Cheryl, the family of Talia Paris, and all whom we name before you now. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those dear to us and those in our weekly St. Peter's prayer cycle. Kim, Ron, Brooke, Jacob, and Logan. Susan, Mike, Brent, Sarah, and Nicole. Bill, Judy, and LCB. Merciful God, we pray for all our siblings in Christ, for the people of Grace Lutheran Church in Mitchell, and for their pastor, Jerry Luck. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. and life. Bless us and these gifts which you receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in your Lenten pilgrimage. Make our fasting, fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So I remembered it is in your worship guides this week, so I just draw your attention to the um, ad or the announcement, I'll say, in the inside about the Mother's Day pork chop dinner. Um, the dates, the amounts, all of the information about how to get your tickets are in your worship guides, so please uh, make sure that, that you, um, if you're planning to, and we hope you do, we do need to sell at least 200 meals um, for this fundraiser. Uh, and they, we need to have those um, purchased by April 20th. So you still have some time, but don't leave it till the last minute. Get on there and buy those tickets and um, spread the word to let, let your neighbors and friends know as well. This Saturday, uh, March 26th at 9 a.m., we are having our annual indoor spring cleaning here at the church. So that's mostly in the sanctuary, doing all of the dusting um, and deeper cleaning that doesn't happen throughout much of the year. Um, meeting at 9 a.m., we love any and all who are able to come out and help, uh, bring your own rags and, and equipment and all that, and um, if you're not quite sure, we'll have someone here to help guide you on what needs to be done. Um, it's another thing too, if there are high school students that need volunteer hours, uh, we can sign for those. So that's, um, if, if people are looking for hours, please come out for that as well. Um, for Palm Sunday, so again, this is not coming up until April 10th, and I will remember to put this in the worship guide for next time. Um, the Eastern Synod is doing a special initiative, encouraging congregations, instead of waving palm branches, to um, wave, I don't know if we'll actually wave them, but to wave textile items. So to find an organization in your community that is in need of things like um, socks, underwear, bed sheets, so on. So I, I did contact Shelterlink and I emailed um, the director, Joanna Parker, this past week, and she gave me a list of some things that they could use. So um, I will put this in the worship guide next week so you have it written out. But on April 10th, so Sundays before that, or for Sunday, April 10th, for Palm Sunday, if you would like to participate, um, to bring things like single bed sheets and pillowcases, single mattress protectors, underwear, washcloths and towels, or reusable cleaning cloths and rags are all textile items that ShelterLink can make use of. So um, for Palm Sunday, that is what we're going to do. Um, we were not, well, I also, I didn't get the email this year about ordering palm branches because we haven't done it in a couple of years. So um, this is what we will do. And I think it's a really wonderful initiative to actually do something for our community, um, for an organization that needs uh, support. So. Just keep that in mind and you'll be reminded again in the Sundays leading up. I want to just say a word too, of course, I'm sure you know that tomorrow public health guidelines are changing in our province, um, namely the mask mandate is being lifted. So church council discussed this at our last meeting and this was sent out by email. So I just want to say again, um, council decided that as of tomorrow when the mask mandate is lifted that it will be up to folks to choose whether or not they want to wear a mask. Um, and I know, again, like so much of this stuff has become really difficult. Um, it seems like we are not on the same page, right, after all this time. Some are more comfortable, some are less comfortable. Um, so whether, you know, you, you choose not to wear a mask or you choose to continue wearing a mask, um, we are, we are in this together and we're sort of understanding that we are at different places in all of this um, and still remaining hopeful that things will continue in a positive direction that we can carry on with the easing of these public health restrictions. Um, yes. Were there any other announcements from council? Anything else I needed to lift up? The anniversary committee is meeting this Wednesday, um, 7.30 p.m. here at the church. So a reminder, that's night, Wednesday night this week, anniversary committee. And thank you for that reminder for me too. <laughs> um, the last thing that I want to share that is um, 
We have an anniversary celebration in our midst this morning. Barb and Wayne Higgins are celebrating their 52nd wedding anniversary. They were married here in this church 52 years ago today by Pastor Brill. So we're very thankful for you guys. And very glad that you came from Stratford to join us this morning, that we could mark this occasion with you. So yeah, happy anniversary. I'll invite you to stand and receive God's blessing. You were children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. <laughs> 